of all the Russias, Paul I, is a strange combination of tyrant, coward, weakling, and madman. He is feared and hated by his subjects whose resentment and bitterness are inward and without visible protest. But even as Paul creates terror and woe in the hearts of his subjects, so does Paul himself live in constant dread and fear of those subjects. He is harassed by suspicion and doubt, afraid to even eat, drink, or sleep. He fears he will meet the end that had been the fate of some of his ancestors. There is only one living soul in whom Paul places any trust, and that only at intervals. He is the Prime Minister, Count Palen, who has won a powerful influence in the Empire by virtue of this trust. He can handle the Tsar like a child. His position is unapproachable, save only by the Tsar himself. Count Palen is in love with the Countess Osterman, wife of an army officer. They are surprised by the husband. He picks up one of Palen's boots to throw at a window, but is the victim of a Cossack bullet. One of the Tsar's edicts is that no one shall present himself at a window when he rides by. The Tsar and his Cossack guard had just passed. Palen, the patriot, pitying the Tsar, is at the same time bleeding for his suffering country. He determines to use his love, the Countess, as a pawn to lure the Tsar into a game of death. At St. Michael, built as a murder-proof castle by Paul, the Tsar is more concerned with the number of buttons on the gaiters of Stefan than with matters of international importance. He whips Stefan for not having enough buttons. Stefan suffers in silence. Helen arrives and, after an audience with the Tsar, sees Stefan. He presses the soldier into service as his personal bodyguard, promising Stefan revenge. He also outlines plans of dethroning of the monarch to court attaches. Alexander, the crown prince, is an idealist with a yearning towards his father, and Palen's proposition shocks and horrifies him. When Palen realizes that his plea to the young man has been in vain, he determines to take drastic steps and warn the Tsar against Alexander. The Tsar has no love for his son, for he knows the attitude of his subjects towards the crown prince. They love him. Paul, therefore, immediately places his son under arrest. Palen's next step is to surround himself with his faithful followers and outline his plan minutely, whereby the Tsar will be pressed for his abdication, and failing in this, he is to be assassinated, thus clearing the way for Alexander's being placed on the throne. On the day of the night the plan is to materialize, Paul suddenly decides to leave the city with Lapukin, his mistress. This will upset the plans, and in desperation, Palen manages to put the Tsar in contact with the snuffbox, which he, Palen, owns. In this snuffbox, hidden by a secret lid, there is an alluring likeness of the Countess Osterman, Palen's love. The Tsar becomes excited and calls off the trip. He must meet the Countess. Palen arranges this and ingeniously manages to leave the Countess alone with the Tsar. He clumsily makes love to her. The Countess, outraged with her betrayal by Palen, discloses the minister's plans to the Tsar. The Count is summoned, and he explains that he has been in the service of the conspirators to learn of their plans. He pledges his life for the Tsar's life. Paul is satisfied and retires to his quarters. Later that night, while the Tsar sleeps fitfully, his officers appear. They gain entrance to his bedroom. He shrieks in fear and calls for Palen. The Count waits outside weeping. The officers are subdued for the moment by the Tsar's dramatic plea. I am the Tsar, by divine right! Then from behind appears Stefan. He rushes up to the Tsar. <coughs> and presently, the Tsar is dead. While the bells toll ominously outside, and the peasants hail their new Tsar, Palen and Stefan face each other in Palen's home. Stefan holds a pistol. As the clock strikes the hour, a shot rings out. Palen is mortally wounded. At this moment, the Countess appears. She embraces Palen. He turns to her and says, I have been a bad friend and lover, but I have been 
a patriot. With these words, the patriot falls dead. <laughs> 